Okay, so we left off. So we're building this one rule accumulation function, and we're, there's lots of pieces to that. And so we're looking at the different pieces, and ultimately uh, we're going to be putting that, putting it all together to to write that function. But uh, this was an important piece, and that was um, the number of completed intervals from a, our starting point, to the current value of x. So let's just practice this one more time. One more time. So I've got an a value of 0.48, delta x is 0.203. Current value of x is 13.46. This is my n slider. So now can you figure out how many completed intervals? You guys should all be able to do this. So one last time. How many completed intervals between 0.48 and 13.46 if our moment width is 0.203? I always want to process. I never want a final answer. So, what, what was your thinking to do this? So, you wanted to take x minus, okay, right. and I get 63.941. So, number of completed intervals is. How come I don't round up and do 64? Okay. What exactly is the 0.941? What exact so that 0.941 represents what exactly? That the dx equals 0.941? Yeah, so 0 0.941 is still a number of intervals, right? So this, this is a number of intervals, 63.941. So it's still a number of intervals. So you can think of that as a percent, right? That's like point, a fraction of the interval that we made it through in the current interval. Okay, and so we said we've got a way to, to, to give us uh, what? Cut that. We have a way to get that number, mathematically to get that number exactly, which was what? Floor. So I can just type in floor. When you type in floor, it gives you the brackets that represent floor. And so if I put that operate that calculation in floor, it returns 63. Okay, so now we can talk about what is so uh, uh, we've seen in an animation before. It's just a it's just a symbol like in here. If you go to um, let me show you. So there's lots of you go to edit emoji and symbols, which is actually not part of GC, but you have it in your GC window, and you go to you've got all these different categories of uh, symbols. I think it's pictographs. Is it a Mac thing? This is a Mac thing. But. Oh, arrows. So I to get that hand, I went to arrows, and in the arrows, there's the up. So if you do symbols, so you can do your, you establish your point, and then comma symbol equals quotes, and then you can choose anything from this menu to put in your quotes in the symbol if you have a Mac. I think it's PC. Unfortunately, you're just you're just stuck to what you can type in your keyboard. 
Okay, anyway, that's kind of a side issue. Uh, on Mac, on PC can't do it. PC can't do a Delta. On Mac, it's uh, option J. You just have to come up with a different character string to distinguish between DX and Delta X. So you can do Del, you can do like Delta X, or you can do Del X, or something. Okay, so now uh, another, the last kind of piece that's of interest when we're building this A function is this function left x. Okay, so notice what left x is. Left x is always the x, we've talked about this before, it's always the left side of the current interval. So now that we know how many completed intervals we have, we need a formula or a, a formula or the rule for the function left x. So can you come up with that rule? So how would we, we know A is the starting value, and then we have, we know the number of completed intervals, and then we want to get the X value at the left side. And so how many completed intervals do we go across to get to that value of left X? How many completed intervals do we go across? Let me make those intervals bigger. So let's change it to, 0.703. So here we are, x, the blue x is, is in the current interval, left x is the x value at the left side of the current interval. How many completed intervals do we have to traverse across to get to left x? How many completed intervals do we have to go across? So that, that's the question I posed to you in order to create the formula or the, the rule for left x. Go. So the first question you want to ask is, how many completed intervals do you have to traverse across to get to that x value, left x? That will help you then develop the rule for left x. Yeah, gen no, general formula. Using a x and delta x, we want to come up with the x value, which is equal to left x. So the, fir the first question you need to answer is, how many completed intervals do you go across to get to left x? Once you answer that question, then coming up with a rule for left x should be pretty easy. You can do it in a minute or two. Let's do it on this one, it might be easier. So, how many completed intervals do you need to go across get to left x. How many completed intervals do you need to go across to get to left x? Or maybe I should say, how many of the completed intervals do you need to go across to get to left x? Sure, you just write it down. But if you use, if you use it, you've got to establish it as a string first. Yeah.
Okay, let's just look at this example. So, so we really got to get straight. So here's an example up at the top. I started my A at 0.1, and then my delta X is 0.15. Okay? So the current value of X is 0.64. What is left of X, first of all? What is left of X? What is left of X? You should be thinking it's 0.55. Should be thinking it's 0.55. Okay. <laughs> How many completed intervals are there starting from A to X? How many completed intervals? You should be thinking what? How many completed intervals? Three. You could just count them in this case, right? So left x and the number of completed intervals are apples and oranges. Left x is a value of x, in this case 0.55 on the x scale, right? The number of completed intervals is like counting. One interval, two intervals, three intervals, four intervals. You've got to have that straight. But left x is an x value. It's the x value at the left side of the current interval. And the number of completed intervals is like is a different kind of number. It's like counting how many intervals. So before, so that's really important. Yeah. You came up with the formula? Okay, I'll come up and check. Okay, so then, so my question to you was, given a current value of x, how many completed intervals, in any situation, how many completed intervals does it take you to get to left x? All right. Based on that, write a formula for the value of x that is left x. So first decide, how many completed intervals does it take to get to left x from A? Once you know that, that will help you to write a formula for the value of left x. So if you want me to check, I guess you're not going to write it.
Okay, keep working on it. So are you guys all in agreement on this? You guys in agreement? How many completed intervals does it take to get from A to left X? Minus a over delta x, right? So that's the number of complete intervals. So that's how many intervals we traverse across. So left x is? So now, how do we define that x value? Most of you got it. We're going to start where? We got it first. So, so uh, First, we're going to have a, right? Starting from, from x, uh, x equals 0, we're going to go across a first. And then we got to go this far. How far is this from here to here? The number of completed intervals. And then each one of those intervals has a change of x of delta x. Now you have all the pieces, you're going to have to go back. You need to go back and watch videos from previous days. But you have all the pieces now to write this one rule A function. One rule A function. You've got everything you need. You're just going to have to piece it together yourself and review that. Okay. Any questions on left of X or... Have to 
side. But I'm not wasting your time. How about that? <laughs> okay. Any questions? Okay, six to a table max, six to a table max. <laughs> Don't grab for him yet. I'll tell you when to grab for him. Six to a table. Okay, this first one. Okay, what who is confident about their answer? What is each question mark? Go, Oscar. Okay, and then you write the two uh, You're getting there, but it's, it's kind of uh, too wordy. Jose. Better? Yes, choice. The accumulation of a completed interval. The accumulation of a completed interval. So those other ones with Oscar are a little wordy. So, yeah, so uh, Jose would that would be what did you say, Jose? That I would accept. That's that's close enough. But so the best answer is the accumulation of a completed interval. Accumulation of a completed interval. No, the key here is it's an amount of accumulation. So I'm showing you amounts of accumulation of weight, right? Because the y-axis here is pounds. So it's got to have something to do with an amount of accumulation of weight. It's this, but it's the only, it's the completed interval and not the current it's, interval. It's A completed interval, right? Not all of them. Right, for A completed interval. Okay. We can get, let's give half points for these. Okay, you can have a half a point for this. Yeah, so just, if you were close to something like, so it's got to, it's got to say an accumulation for a, for a interval. If, if you have something about accumulation for a interval, that's at least a half a point. Okay, that's at least a half a point. But if it's the accumulation for a completed interval, that's a full point. Does that help? Okay, next. So that's worth one. Animation one is worth one point. Okay. Animation two. The meaning of X. Actually, there's kind of three ways to say this. What, who thinks they know what X is for this one? Left X. Left X is one. So it's left X. That works. What's another way? Something else that works? Maybe it's the value of X. No, sorry. It's an X, you gotta, it's gotta be an X value. Some kind of X value. Yeah, that's okay. Value of X for the completed intervals. That's good. Value of X for the completed intervals. That works. And then, uh, what was the next one? 
Oh, you could also say the value of x at the left side of the current interval. You said, I don't know if anyone said that, but that's what left x is. The value of x at the left side of the current interval. It's just left that half. That's the gun. So it's just left x. It's just left x. Left x is always for the current interval already. So yeah, it's, I think it's right. Okay, the y coordinate. From accumulation from from the completed interval. So this is all the accumulation from all the complete, the complete intervals. Or you could say the sum of accumulation from the completed interval. No, because it's a sum of interval. It's a sum of accumulation. It's a sum of you, you have to be adding up accumulation from the completed interval to get that. So it's not. What did you say? Again? So are you saying one interval so it can't be one complete? It has to be the sum of accumulation from many intervals. So you're saying what? what, what? Uh, okay, that's slightly different than what she said. Because she just pointed out one interval. So if you say if you said the accumulation at left x, yeah, that's okay. Okay, I thought that's No, she, so in her answer she had just there was for one interval. And so that's what she called it. Okay, third animation. Okay, horizontal bar, horizontal bar. DX, DX. Or you could say the change in the value of X in the current interval. Is that what you said? The change of the value of X in the current interval, you also said. No, for DX, that's what DX is. DX is the change of X in the current interval. Yes. Okay, why? Why value is? Accumulation in the current interval. Well, yeah, either is fine. By saying the amount of accumulation in the current interval, that's implying a change from the start of the current interval to whatever x is. Yeah, so change of accumulation in the current interval or just the accumulation in the current interval. Okay, animation four. Accumulation in the current interval or logic with the change of accumulation. Okay, all right, last one. X coordinate is current value of X, the current value of X, the current value of X. What is the y value? Yes, you could say accumulation at the current value of x. You could say net accumulation at the current value of x. Or you could say the sum of accumulation from completed intervals and the current interval. Did you write all that? <laughs> what did you write, Kendall? Wait. So just be careful because intervals are objects. So you have, you have to sum up intervals. Make sure you're careful. So it's the sum of accumulation from. Yeah, you were. Of course you were. But just <laughs> be careful what you're writing because intervals are objects. Okay? You don't. You can't add and subtract intervals. They're objects. They're things, right? So if you're talking about a sum, it's the sum of accumulation from intervals, right?
Yeah, if you put accumulation, that's okay. Yeah. <coughs> but it's better is accumulation for the current value of x, or the sum of the accumulations for the current value of x. Current accumulation, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. All right, any other clarifications? And then you get two points for free, and that's other points. Okay, so we got a couple minutes left. Bless you. Just a half point for that team. No. <laughs> Responses, 18 points for responses, and two points for free. So just one. Add two points to your score, and then take it out of 20. Just uh, I come up with Mill, I do want to talk a little bit more. So I told you what the next project would be because uh, what I was thinking was uh, the one after that, which is going to be this one. It, it's really you need all this. It's kind of just like adding to adding to that one. So I told you what the next one was going to be, and in my mind. I knew what the one after that was going to be. Well, the one after that needs all the stuff that you need to do in the one I told you was going to be the next one. So we're just going to jump to this one. We're just going to do this. This is the next one. Okay? Instead of, instead of making it two assignments, we'll just make it one. And you're going to have, today's Thursday, you're going to have a week from Tuesday to do this. So you have 12 days to do this. This is, now we're, now we're getting into it here. So here's what it is. It's going to be that you're going to build this animation. Okay? U1 is showing the exact rate, and it's animated by n. Okay, so n is the current value of x, and you're going to view, view one, you show you show x. View two shows it shows a static version of the current the rate function, and then it shows the uh, generation of the r function. Okay, now that will be for any delta x that is chosen by this slider. Okay. All right. You don't need the current thing. Okay, so that current thing, that was just for the, to have something to reference for your quiz. So you don't need the current slider. Okay, you just need, you need the view and the delta x slider. Okay, view three. View three then shows the approximate accumulation function. So view three is showing the approximate accumulation function. And... What happens is, how, so uh, how do we make approximate accumulation better? How do we make approximate accumulation better? Smaller delta x. And how do we make it better than that? So the smaller that you're, so this is really cool. <laughs> I hope you appreciate it. And you're going to build it yourself, okay? You've got all the you have all the tools. So um, the smaller your interval is, the better that the rate function. What? The better the rate function mimics the real rate function, and so then subsequently, the better that your approximate accumulation will be to this mysterious real accumulation function that we know exists but we haven't seen yet, okay? But still, that that's still the approximate accumulation function. It's made up of segments, right? It's made up of it's piecewise linear segments based on those rates. Okay? So what are we really after? Where does the exact accumulation function come from? 
really, really small intervals. Okay. So what are you looking at over there on the in the left pane? What are you looking at? Yeah, I took it. So. <laughs> so what are you looking at when you look at that equation on the left? Watch, so you can zoom in by hitting, if you hit shift, you can make a square. If you hit shift, oh no. What did I do? I zoomed in on part, so what are you looking at? Tiny, so still, it's made up of tiny constant rates. But how's that, how's that approximate rate function? Pretty good? It's, it's virtually, it's almost indistinguishable from the real rate graph, but it's made up of constant rates. And so therefore, what do you think about that approximate accumulation function? Yeah, it is. So here's the actual accumulation function when it's in black. And you see it's, it's indistinguishable from the approximate when the delta x is really, really small. So I'm gonna, since we're over time, and uh, I will. Um, so we're gonna need some things. We're gonna need. Uh, you know how to do floor. So summation, real fast here. Summation. Control Shift I. No, that's integral. <laughs> control Shift S. So Control Shift I is integral. Control Shift S is summation. You'll discover what else you need and just ask me. So this is the next thing you're working on. Do a week from Tuesday. That's right. Here's the function for the sand unloading. There's the function for the sand unloading, but all you have to do is change that capital R function and it should work for another function.